Hey guys. Hey guys, it's Aaron Laurie with Plan Free. It's been three months since our last confession. I mean video. Uh, we've been playing around this summer in the mountains and everywhere else. So here we go with the next video. Hope you like it. We're back with the story of the time we spent three months in Costa Rica. One of the first things we noticed when we flew from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada and arrived in Costa Rica is that there were monkeys everywhere. They'd be crawling right through the little village that we stayed in. They'd be in the trees down by the beach and they would just show up. They're called howler monkeys and they, they howl. So they would come through and uh, the lead male, he'd get into his thing and you would know they were there. You'd smell them and you'd hear them for sure. <laughs> but they were they were literally hey right on our balcony on the roof you hear click clocks on the roof and just literally right in their territory we were living so that was really a culture shock and a right in the middle of the jungle shock and right on the beach also so it was just a super awesome experience completely immersed in their world you're just there all around you you're in the middle of it living yeah. in the jungle so it was kind of an intimate experience with the monkeys. And we apologize for the quality of our video. Um, when we did live in Tamarindo for the three months, this was many years ago, seven or eight years ago, I think 2011 maybe, something like that. So I mean, we did the best we could. So we apologize for blurriness and such, but we're getting better. Yeah, I think the first video camera was invented like six months prior to our trip. And so you can tell in the quality, but yeah. that's all right. We rented a condo as a family unit, my dad and his wife and several visitors throughout the time we stayed there, aunties, cousins showed up. We were able to get quite a nice condo down at the end of the road of Playa Langosta and uh, I loved it there. We were living right on the beach. Um, you could take like a five, 10 minute walk maximum and you'd be right down on this beach. It had an excellent wave break to it. Yeah. We got really active. We started to body surf like many hours, several hours a day because it was so much fun. I would be running up and down the beach with my fly rod chasing the jacks and the pulse tuna first thing in the morning. And uh, we got really active, started to feel very healthy, losing weight uh, very quickly. And uh, it was a world-class spot. You never had to wonder about the weather. It was always going to be 30 to 34, uh, sunny and beautiful. So we would spend the hottest chunk of the day in the water at the beach and then that past three or four hours, the weight was just, not that we needed to lose weight, but the weight would just melt off because we were so active every day. And where we found the condo to rent, we chose not to rent a car um, because it was just a quick 15, 20 minute walk up a fairly quiet lane into town for all the provisions. So. We're body surfing for three, four hours every single day because it was so awesome watching the surfers out there too. And then walking to town for our provisions. It was just a wonderful beach lifestyle. Yeah, speaking of beach lifestyle, Lori and I did kind of a funny thing on our way out of our three months of Tamarindo in the airport in Liberia. We uh, asked the lady permission if we could jump on the uh, digital bag scale, luggage scale. And uh, she and I both jumped on there and um, I had lost about 25 pounds in the three months that we lived there just through having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of walking into town, uh, we didn't rent a car. We would take taxis from time to time, but uh, there was Canadian uh, NHL playoffs going on there and because my dad and I were there together, we would frequently at the end of our day uh, walk in the 20-25 minute walk from Playa Langosta into Tamarindo. There was a little sports bar in town owned by a couple of uh, Canadians from Calgary actually and so you could count on them to have all the hockey games on every evening when we walked in there and so my dad and I could get a little bit of a feeling of home and watch our local hockey team which was great. Frequently uh, as a result of walking into town if it was during the day we'd hang out in Tamarindo town small town very touristy there was a little bit of shopping there i remember one time uh, we got excited and uh, took some surfing lessons my dad Lori, and me uh, lined it up didn't look so hard how hard could it be yeah. 
Yeah, until you go to do it, and then you're like, wow, I'm not coordinated or flexible. I think I was sore for about four days after that. Not sure if I even surfed uh, uh, legitimately, but... Uh, all you surfers, we have total respect. It takes complete body strength. We did that surfing lesson right off uh, Playa Tamarindo, which is immediately off the main town there. It's a great beach, very wide, nice shallow. Dad and I also did some fishing off that beach, uh, hired a guide, some guy with a boat. We had a good time, uh, zooming around, caught a few small fish. I think we caught some mackerel and some skipjack, like a false tuna. Brought him home, he did all the cleaning and made some little strips for sushi, that was delicious. Yeah, had some fish tacos also for the gang, they liked that, oh, so yeah. that was cool. So with our stay at the condo there in, in Playa Langosta, we were in a gated community and we would have um, staff coming in to help us out with the property and the pool and stuff like that. And one of the guys that would uh, seem to come and help us out several times a week, seemed to help us out several times a week was a guy named Jose. And Lori was the only one Lori was the only one in our group that had some Spanish at the time and so she could converse a little bit and ended up making friends with this Jose fellow. Anyway, as a result, he invited us to his family's home for an authentic Costa Rican meal. Yeah, we met his wife, Arelis, and their daughter. Um, we had a beautiful dinner. We'll show photos. They made a corn stew and cooked it in an outdoor area from their home. And so they showed us how they prepared it and our whole family and auntie and everybody was in there watching us just really nice so we got to experience a traditional costa rican home the way they cook and live very modest just really wonderful hospitable people and that's the costa rican culture and so i started to think well wouldn't it be nice to volunteer and maybe help out at this school that wasn't too far away and i just thought it would be a wonderful way to try to help my spanish a little more but give back a little to the community and try to contribute some lessons in english so I met the best teacher, Amalia. She and I are still friends on Facebook and helped out in the classroom for about two months of my stay, several days a week. So I got to meet the teachers and the principal and see all the little Costa Rican cuties. The girls wore a little uh, uniform dress and it was a really nice experience. My dad, Lori, and myself needed some dental stuff done. This was our first experience internationally. We'd heard that you could save a bunch of money. so. One day we headed from Tamarindo to San Jose. San Jose was a bit of an eye-opener because this is a large city. It's very modern. You could think you were in North America in, yeah. in some cases. And uh, so we went in there and, and we got some dental work done. And the takeaway from that was excellent facilities. They had the um, ultrasonic. Siptronic? Uh, <laughs> cleaning. And our office back home didn't even have that yet at the time. And then the price, I mean, ours was hundreds per person back home and this was 40 bucks or something. So it was wonderful. Yeah, big difference. I like my Canadian dentist, but uh, he hasn't been seeing much of us for the last eight years or so. As a group, we ended up renting a car numerous times when we were living in Tamarindo just to get out and see other sights and sounds in the country because Costa Rica has a large diversity in altitudes, landscapes, climate zones, anything from Caribbean beaches to volcanic rainforests, everything in between, it's quite diverse. So one of the times we rented a vehicle, we all suited up and went to Arenal, which is one of the high mountain sort of volcanic regions. Uh, stayed in a cool little lodge up there as a group and got into some really fun activities, didn't we? I mean, if you go to Costa Rica, you hear about zip lining. It's a must do. We just can't say enough about whatever the price they charge you, do the zip lining. One of the zip lines in this particular location was over a kilometer long, so a good time was had for sure. Yep. We did a couple other tours when we went through Arenal. It was a four hour car ride, so we got there. We're in a mountain cloud forest. We had really wonderful traditional Costa Rican meals with the beans and the rice and a piece of meat. We went to see some hummingbirds at this hummingbird farm. We'll put some videos and photos in. It was unbelievable. Dozens and dozens of hummingbirds. We also did a coffee tour. I went with my auntie and it was fantastic. We saw how the coffee was grown and got some samples. They showed us how they made a local sugar. It was just wonderful to see how Costa Ricans traditionally have lived. Mm-hmm.
when we were hanging out on the hummingbird tour, as you'll see in the photos, there was hummingbird feeders all around us. But the coolest part was is there was hummingbirds at all these hummingbird feeders around us. Many different sizes and species and colors. You were literally standing surrounded by hummingbirds. And, and for me, that was really cool. It's his favorite bird. So I, I enjoyed that, obviously. But on another note, when you head up into RNL, you're going to notice that the climate changes completely from when you're hanging out on the beach. So on the beach, you know, you're super hot uh, in your swimsuit, but when you go up into Arenal, it's more like a mountainous sort of climate like this where you are going to need layers to hang out. All right, so after living in Costa Rica for three months, we're going to offer you a pro tip, just a quick summary on how to speak Costa Rican Spanish. The one phrase you want to focus in on to learn is a phrase, Pura Vida. It's a P-U-R-A-V-I-D-A. Roughly translated in Spanish, it means pure life. But in Costa Rica, it can mean oh. practically everything. It can mean good morning. Goodbye. Hello. See you later. See you soon. Where's the bus? <laughs> Hi, how Twist around my heel. How Where's the doing? bananas? <laughs> One, more time. Bananas? One more time. Oh. <laughs> it can mean another beer, please. It can mean gringo. Oh man, Pura Vida everything, everywhere, every day. So if you can pronounce Pura Vida, if you can say this phrase, Pura Vida, your Spanish in Costa Rica is on point. Just say it for everything and as a response to everything and you'll be golden. Golden. And that's your Costa Rican 30 second Spanish lesson. Pura Vida. Pura Vida, honey. All right, is there any other points that we need to talk about here? Better check your things. Pura Vida. Oh, Another time we rented a vehicle, we joined a, a group, a small group of friends that uh, we made on the beach. And uh, we headed up north actually, almost to the border of Nicaragua and uh, went on a cool hike with a couple of girls. So cool. Miss you, Kay. <laughs> yeah. Well, a few others also. Yeah, I mean, the sights and sounds in Costa Rica were so incredible. We saw some bubbling mud pools that were steaming and stinky. <laughs> uh, she took us to a beautiful jump off spot and we had a boatload of fun there too. Yeah, this was uh, one of our first experiences in a jungle type hike and uh, also our first experience in, in living in a tropical jungle type setting. To put it in perspective, this was our second year of living a geographically free lifestyle and the first year we'd lived in a Spanish speaking Central America jungle type country. So many new experiences for us definitely added to the feeling that we're falling in love with this geographically independent lifestyle and we want to continue it as long as we can. Yeah. That's pretty much the story of the time we lived in Costa Rica for three months. This is Plan Free, I'm Air. I'm Lori. If you like what you're hearing here, click the like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell icon so you always know when the next video is coming. Thanks for watching everybody. Hope you enjoyed it, bye for now.